In this lecture, we're going to talk about the ventricular system. You know already from Dr. Alsup's lectures on the skull that you have holes in your uh, holes in your head, basically holes in your skull. I'm going to talk about the holes that are in your brain. The ventricles, you have two laterals, one on each side, one associated with each of your cerebral hemispheres. There's a third ventricle on the midline, a fourth ventricle that's underneath the cerebellum and also on the midline. The Ventricles are the home of the choroid plexus, and the choroid plexus is what makes your cerebrospinal fluid. In this image, we can see a cast. Uh, so we've put a resin into this, the ventricle system and then peeled the brain away so you see what's, so the, what is a space shows up as something positive. The lateral ventricle is here on one side, and you can see that it has three horns. The midline is the third ventricle, a cerebral aqueduct. The fourth ventricle is here, and you can see barely shadowed in here is the lateral ventricle from the other hemisphere. So how do you get to lateral ventricles? During development, your brain starts out, or your entire nervous system, starts out as the, what's called the neural plate. And that's this flat kind of section here. The neural plate rolls up and forms the neural tube, which we have kind of pictured here. The neural tube then becomes elongated and is starts to kind of look like a long cylinder. The front part is going to be your brain. The bottom part is going to be your, I'm sorry, spinal cord. This is then going to progress, and the front part, the brain part of the long neural tube, is going to grow really, really fast. Cell division uh, is going to take off, and what happens then is you get a big expansion of this front part of the brain. The bottom part, or this middle section here, stays firmly in place, and so as these cells divide, they expand, and you end up with two cortical bubbles. So this is going to be your cortex, and this is going to be your left hemisphere and your right hemisphere. And you can see then as the bubbles develop that then of course the inside, the lumen of those bubbles just kind of continues on. So this again will be your left ventricle and your right ventricle. The third ventricle remains on the midline. The cerebral aqueduct is going to be here leading down to the fourth ventricle. And then the lumen still persists into the spinal cord um, as your central canal. And we'll talk more about the central canal when we talk about the spinal cord uh, in a later series of lectures. So to go back to our lateral ventricles, there's one in each of your cerebral hemispheres. And they span the entire um, range of your cerebral hemispheres. So the anterior, you have an anterior horn of the lateral ventricle, and this is found, you can see this in sections of your frontal lobe. There's an inferior horn of your lateral ventricle, and you can see that in the temporal lobe. The posterior horn of your lateral ventricle is all the way back in your occipital lobe. And then your parietal lobe kind of surrounds this area which we call the body of the lateral ventricle. There's also this area here, which is kind of shaped like a triangle. If I could draw a triangle. And this is uh, referred to as the trigone. It's an area where the body, the inferior horn, and the posterior horn all come together. What you can see on pictures of, of, of embalmed brains is that the lateral ventricle is seen here, and you notice that there's kind of this, like a, a window across it. This is the septum pellucidum. It's a thin layer of tissue, and it separates your lateral ventricles one from the other. In this image, we've removed the, lateral, uh, the septum pellucidum, and you can see deep into that lateral ventricle. The ventricles then, um, the two lateral ventricles, the cerebrospinal fluid that's in them flows into that midline third ventricle via a tiny little opening called 
the interventricular foramen. In the next section of this lecture, we'll talk about the midline structures of the third ventricle, the fourth ventricle, and then we'll talk more about the flow of cerebrospinal fluid.